Hello everyone, I'm Peter Howarth. I'm one of the directors of admissions for Queen Mary's English department and behind me is the English department. I'm here on campus and as you can see it's quite a nice spacious place, a bit of quiet in the centre of the city. When I swing the camera around there's the library behind me and then in front of that is a graveyard, actually a grade two listed graveyard for Spanish and Portuguese Jews who came to London fleeing persecution in the 18th century. It's a historical accident that it's here, but it's also really symbolic about the way we care about the humanities here. We're interested in what made British culture British. We're also really interested in all of those cultures that didn't quite fit, or those cultures that really belong here but have a home somewhere else as well, people who are from two places at once. We're fascinated by Dickens and Shakespeare and Austen and the great names you know, but we're also fascinated by the way that minority cultures have to work in and against and through and underneath majority cultures in order to find a place for themselves. Hi everyone, this is the canal and behind me you can see Queen Mary and some of the accommodation blocks. The canal is a beautiful leisure spot, it's a way you can walk in a traffic free way across London right the way around past Victoria Park and to Regent's Park. Originally though, of course, it's uh, industrial architecture, it's a way of getting coal and ice uh, and building materials to, to construct and make livable the new suburbs in Islington and Hackney. And it's that way, it's kind of part of the planned city, the reinvention of London as something that was designed rather than something that just grew. Um, the planned city where you plan the entrances and the exits. You think of it like an organism um, with the inputs and the outputs. The literary version of the planned city is of course the utopia and its evil twin, the dystopia. And we teach lots of uh, modules involving utopias, in fact a whole module on utopia itself. Um, one of the most famous writers of dystopias is the late J.G. Ballard, who was um, a chronicler of tower blocks and shopping malls, and also a graduate of Queen Mary. We must have taught him something. I'm standing outside the People's Palace, which is kind of the heart of the arts at Queen Mary. It was started in the 19th century as a mixture between a library and an educational institute and a cultural hub. And the idea was that it would be arts for people who didn't normally get access to the arts and arts that would genuinely transform people's lives. Arts that weren't just a luxury, a nice cushion on the edge of life, but arts that really made a difference. And that's pretty much what we still think. People's Palace Project, still run by the drama department at Queen Mary, uh, does really innovative work using staging to help local democracy projects and involving arts and theatre um, to help people's mental health. Standing outside Queen Mary's Library, which as you might expect is full of books and also computers and databases and networks and sometimes people saying shh. Digitisation has really changed how we do English over the last 20 years. You can not only look at books on your own screen, but you can see original manuscripts or you can dive into huge collections of newspapers and you can study the way that texts become mediatized, turned from one media into another. And you'll see that reflected in a number of ways in our teaching and in the books we're writing ourselves. I'm standing on the green bridge that uh, connects the two sides of Mile End Park and behind me you can see the campus and the Mile End Road and I think probably the Shard as well. But if I swing round you can see where I'm standing. Behind me is Canary Wharf. That's the site of the old London docks, where Britain controlled its empire and brought unimaginable, unimaginable amounts of wealth and new cultures to London, made it the global city it is today. It also cemented a view of the world in which owning stuff, owning your body, owning people, owning the world, is natural and normal. That view is capitalism. And having the city overlooking us like this reminds us that when we're talking about books or films or any kind of literature, capitalism is never far away. Some of the books we study acknowledge it directly, like Dickens' novels or T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland, but none of them can step outside it because it's the system in which we live and move, even if the books themselves are trying their best to find an alternative model of ownership. 
I'm in Whitechapel, um, just about half a mile down the road from Queen Mary. And the building site you can see behind me this summer announced that they found there the remains of London's first purpose-built theatre. It was in the back garden of a pub called the Red Lion and it was run by a chap called James Burbage. It went quite well as far as we can tell, it ran for about nine years. But after nine years Burbage took the money and took all the ideas he got from running the theatre and set up another bigger one about half a mile that way towards Shoreditch. That theatre was called The Theatre and he had the good luck to hire a young dramatist with crazy ideas for new plays then called things like Richard III and The Merchant of Venice. We do a lot of Shakespeare at Queen Mary, but we don't just study the text, we're studying where it happened, on the ground, in our backyard. This gorgeous space I'm standing outside is the Liberia Bookshop on Brick Lane. It's got a fantastic selection of books. It's also really, really tiny. They've kept, selected them really, really carefully. And that's something we do quite a lot of at Queen Mary. We have to select. And we also ask good questions about why we select. Who gets on the cannon? Who got pushed out of it? Who had better PR? Who had more power? Who really deserves to be on the list and isn't yet? That's what we specialise in.